Hey guys, it's Motopython here. So today we'll do an update video and I apologize for the lack of updates. Um, there's just been a lot of things going on in life, getting a new job and um, and I actually got my new hobby started so we'll talk about that in another time. Um, yeah, so today we'll do an update video on uh, my stuff, my snakes, my pets and my uh, blood python albino girl here she's doing really well um her weight is pretty good um i have been trying to do a diet kind of thing on her so that um she doesn't get obese uh, as she was about a month ago but uh, as you can see her mouth is kind of screwed up right now uh, if you notice uh, that black little spot right there that's actually a wound that she has on her mouth and uh, what happened with that is that uh, whenever she pees or poops in the environment here I can see it's kind of dirty which I'm going to take care of right now after the video so whenever that, that happens um, the vent ventilation in this cage isn't that all that great so uh, the humidity will increase quite a lot and then uh, she does not like that so she will always try to push with her mouth and uh, against these parts here and uh, it's actually quite sharp and uh, she'll push against the, um, the what do you call this the glass I guess it's not even though it's not made of glass but uh, yeah she'll just try to push away around and try to get out uh, of that high humidity after she peed so uh, when she does that she rubs her nose against this even though it's you would think that it's kind of painful for her to make it so that there's a wound uh, she still does it anyways and uh, she does it quite uh, reluctant uh, not I wouldn't, um, not reluctant, but uh, what do what you call that? Persistent, yes. So <laughs> basically, that's what happened there. And uh, you can see that there's a little wound on her mouth. So we should probably keep an eye out for that and see if it heals properly. But um, what I'm going to do for sure in the next day or two when I get my hands on some sandpaper, I'm going to like basically sand down this entire part here because it's just way too dangerous and uh, she's just gonna hurt herself regardless uh, even though it's painful for her and um, you know there's only s so much time that I spend in my room that I can monitor this kind of thing and uh, just clean the cage immediately so just a uh, additional safety measure and um, hopefully she'll heal good so uh, moving on, um, let's just take a look at what else we have in store today. Okay, so we have the troublemakers here, and as you can see, I grouped them into the top layer in, sm in a smaller environment so that um, I was hoping that they will eat properly. So that's basically half successful, and uh, part of the failure is with my lesser, who's kind of curled up right now. And she hasn't eaten since uh, December, so uh, it's almost four months now. Or maybe a little more than that. And uh, even though I know for sure that, you know, Bob Python sometimes go off feed for as long as half a year, or like six months, you can't help but to, you know, as a keeper, you can't help but to feel worried that, you know, is there something wrong with them? Or maybe, like, am I doing something wrong that, you know, is, isn't exactly perfect for them so that has been happening and I've tried every solution that I could think of and um, it's just not working uh, late when she was still eating uh, in around November she was taking mouse uh, when she was little she was taking rats uh, she just basically converted to mouse for, for absolutely no reason um, right after she hit uh, 800 grams so, um, yeah, I mean, um, in the past four months, I've been trying mouse, 
seems that she does not care for them or maybe she's kind of scared of them that uh, at least that's my reaction as to at least that's my analysis of uh, her reaction and uh, I tried rats which does not work at all uh, it doesn't seem like she's interested at all she just sniff it and then turn her head away try to get away um, the other thing I tried was African software absolutely no effect um, it seems like the smell puts her off immediately and uh, this morning I actually went and tried and then I got my hands on some live mouse and a live rat and uh, you probably guessed it uh, it does not work at all too so um, I mean basically I left them there uh, about 10 minutes monitoring it and um, I mean the the rat was basically like a small rat like she was about this big so it's not like I, I've been giving her like too large a meal but um, you know she's the rat kind of roams around and then she sniffs it um, does not curl up her neck uh, just like she would be when she was about to attack and uh, same thing with the mouse and actually the mouse almost try, like tried to bite her as well so you know I basically didn't leave the mouse in there for too long but the mouse was really active like moving around like rustling the paper towel making a noise kind of thing usually that tends to um, fire them up but uh, she did not take any consideration at all into uh, eating them so um, I know there's one last thing I can probably try actually two maybe I can try like a live African sulfur but uh, I know for sure the smell would kind of puts her off so sh she probably won't take it the other thing I could try would be a gerbil and uh, people has uh, people on the forum has said that you know gerbil works like magic um, but you know then again they also said that about African sulfurs uh, but from my experience uh, it's not really a magic or at least it's not a miracle worker kind of thing so uh, yeah let me know let me know uh, if you guys have any more ideas because um, the frozen fall and the life doesn't work I can't think of any more options maybe hamsters but they're kind of cute or maybe not maybe I'll try it so um, who cares uh, moving on Got my passed out girl here, and you can see that you know even though she's uh, from 09 and uh, she's about thousand something grams, uh, her colors are still really vibrant, uh, which is awesome. And uh, the trouble with her is that you know uh, I thought I had her tr um, converted to rats from um, mouse in the past. But uh, turns out she likes uh, African sulfur the most and uh, this is what gets her feeding every time um, right now. So uh, you know like the first day I got her I that's basically when she was around 300 grams. She was taking a mouse before uh, from the breeder and then uh, she wouldn't take any mouse uh, when she got here so I gave her some African sulfur and uh, after a year or so right now oh uh, actually no after, after almost like almost two years now and um, yeah and after two years uh, she's basically stuck on uh, African sulfur so uh, I know for sure she likes it and um, it's just gonna be real expensive to feed her that but uh, you know whatever gets, gets her surviving and uh, you know keeping her alive kind of thing so I, I really like her and um, you know it's just gonna be a little bit, bit expensive with the lack of supply in my area where I live right now so um, you know it's just one of the sacrifices that you have to make uh, when you're having reptiles or uh, even snakes as pets you just gotta deal with the fact that you know it's not gonna be as cheap as you initially thought uh, sometimes not all the time I mean this is certainly a rare case but uh, it's partly due to my fault and not having the patience to wait until she takes a uh, mouse or rats but uh, it seems kind of impossible to convert her uh, from the so many times I try so I'm not gonna starve her anymore um, in her life and uh, just gonna keep giving her sulfur 
as much as I can. Um, so yeah, there you have it. So next up, and uh, this is the interesting one. So you can see the perspiration uh, is basically because this naughty girl here has been sitting in this water tub and uh, this is the normal female that I bred to my spider male and uh, I'm not sure if you can see maybe this angle might be better but uh, I've not been feeding her for the past two months or maybe she has not taken anything that I gave her and uh, judging from her size I'm not sure if she's pregnant but uh, she's really tense all the time around the tail area uh, I can feel it here uh, not so much on this front so that's I mean I'm not too experienced with breeding so uh, that's basically I guess it's an indication of potentially she's pregnant but uh, you can see that you know not eating two months usually would put her weight down a lot more than this uh, from what I've seen in the past uh, basically because she's a finicky uh, eater she does not take well to um, human contact so um, yeah hopefully we'll get some eggs and uh, we'll get some little normals and spiders uh, eggs but uh, yeah just gotta keep an eye out for her hello yeah there you have it she's super finicky um, yeah hopefully this will work And uh, let's see. Oh, and the other reason that I don't know whether I can't tell whether or not she's uh, pregnant is because I have no experience uh, in terms of uh, palpating her, which is a uh, feeling like uh, taking the snake and it's just feeling the belly and uh, when she runs across your finger and to see if there's actually eggs inside. I uh, don't have like, that kind of skill, so <laughs> it's really hard to tell. Okay, and uh, this is not a new addition, but it's just something that I would like to show you guys. Uh, it's kind of dirty here, but I'll fix that. Uh, this is my corn snake. Uh, she's an anery, or he. We have no idea. And uh, we don't intend to find out. <laughs> it's just uh, basically kind of funny that, you know, you own a pet uh, without knowing its gender. It's just some kind of uh, inside joke me and my sister has. But uh, we just don't want to find out, and uh, maybe someday we will but it's kind of interesting not to know um it's very hard to explain but uh yeah she's looking good um she's basically uh, my first pet uh first pet snake uh that i got when i was studying um outside the city and uh, when i was living by myself and you can imagine my <laughs> the reaction that my mom got uh, when i went home and uh when i finished studying and then go home and tell her when I was unpacking my things that you know hey mom I got something to show you and she's like oh what you got a cat like cuz that, that w that's basically what I've been talking about uh, over the phone when I was away is that you know oh, I'm a, uh, oh I want a cat I want a cat mom can we please get a cat and then you know that never happened but uh, yeah this is what I showed her and <laughs> she's kind of she was kind of freaked out and she was kind of worried but you know she's real cool with uh, what I do in life and you know supportive um, so that went better than I expected and then uh, after a while I got my ball pythons and then she's basically saying that you know uh, well why are you why are you having so many pets all of a sudden like uh, it's real hard to explain to your mother that you know uh, this is basically what happens with everyone who has snakes as a pet um, you know uh, it's just a real addictive hobby and uh, it's kind of like collect them all kind of thing uh, so you know that, that went well I mean she's cool with it so um, yeah can I say anything else about that okay we have a uh, few more tufts left to go left to go uh, so maybe I'll make a part two to this and I'll see you there